This is the Squire of Gothos. Space. Trelane. My favorite, well, one of my top five episodes These from the cool. original series of Star Trek. I have written some more fan fiction, and uh, this is going to be a good one, so stay tuned. Captain's Log, Stardate 2145.5. The Enterprise has been dispatched to the third moon of the M class planet Majoris V to investigate signals emanating from below the moon's surface, which may indicate intelligent life. Upon arrival, we detected a repeating radio indicator and entered into an observational orbit. What have you found so far? Kirk asked Spock, who was reading his blued scanner display. The moon has a thin xenon atmosphere with traces of argon and carbon dioxide. The surface is bare except for a range of hills along the equator. I find no current or ancient signs of life or indications of past civilizations. Then what is creating the signals we are picking up? Kirk asked. A familiar voice replied, that of the squire of Gothos himself, Trelane. Why, it is me, Captain, Trelane replied. Who else would it be? Trelane stood between Uhura's post and the doors to the turbo lift, dressed in a dark blue cloak and jacket, with white lace and a poofy collar that hung down to his chest. Trelane, Kirk snapped back. I thought your parents grounded you. Did you think that would last, Trelane replied. I have a way with my parents, and of course they let me have my way. <clears throat> you mean you ran away, Kirk asked. Oh, Captain, you are ill-mannered, aren't you? Are you again trying to provoke me? Trelane asked, waving his hand, like he was shooing a fly away. I would never, Kirk asked, but why did you bring us here? I wasn't done with you, Trelane replied. I was only getting started. You are trying to kill me. I don't think we need to involve my crew again, Kirk snapped back. Trelane looked about the bridge, looking for familiar faces. Where is LaSalle? Where is Jaeger? I see that irritable Vulcan and your helmsman. What is his name? Sulu, Sulu replied. I never forget a face, Trelane replied, but names, names sometimes escape me. Please forgive me. LaSalle and Jaeger are off duty, Sulu replied. I see. And how about my Nubian beauty? I see she is still here, Trelane said, with a lilt in his voice. Irritated, Kirk interjected. We don't have time for your games, Trelane. If there is no signal, we need to leave and get back to our regular duties. Oh, hush now, Captain. I called you, and you need to stay. I don't plan to kill you anymore. I won that battle. Then what do you want, Kirk snapped back. I want your ship, and everyone in it, all of your crew and passengers, Trelane replied. I want to create my own theme park, and you will all be on display. For who, Kirk asked. For me, of course. Are you planning to sell tickets and put rides on board? That's a fantastic idea, Trelane replied with a smile. He held his arms out and spun around. We can make the bridge the focus of the park. Yes. I can see it now. We can sell tickets there, Trelane said, pointing to the engineer's station, and refreshments over there, Trelane said, pointing to Spock's station. Irritated, Spock spoke up. I would prefer my station to stay as it is. Still ill-mannered, as usual, I see, Trelane replied. That won't do. I think I will make you a clown, and you can sell balloons to the children. Children like you, Spock answered. Trelane was taken aback by Spock's comment. You think I'm a child? Trelane asked. Based on your behavior, I can't come to any other conclusion, Spock replied. Hmm, Trelane said, and Spock disappeared with a wave of his hand. Shocked, Kirk shouted. What did you do with Spock? Oh, don't worry, Captain. Your friend will be fine. I put him in timeout for now, Trelane replied as he stepped down to the captain's chair. I think I would very much like to sit in your chair. I am someone of great importance and deserve such a seat on the bridge. No, Kirk replied. I am the captain of this ship. Challenging me again? When will you ever learn, Trelane said with a sneer. I could wisp you off this deck like I did the last time we met. Would you like me to do that? You have the power. But if you were a man, you'd find other ways to manage your problems, not use power and bully us. Kirk replied. Trelane turned to Uhura and asked, 
What do you think I should do? Uhura replied, I think you should leave us alone and go back to where you came from. You do, Trelane said flat. Well, I don't have to do what you say or do anything your way. Then why did you ask me, Uhura asked. What did you think I would say? I thought you would have come around by now. I can be quite benevolent if I choose, and you could benefit from a better attitude, Trelane replied. You can direct your comments to me, Kirk said, with anger in his voice. I am still the captain of the Enterprise. For now, maybe, Trelane said, leaning against the captain's chair. I would very much like it if you got out of my chair. I won't ask you a third time. Kirk raised from his chair and stared deep into Trelane's eyes. I only do this for the safety of my crew, Kirk said, as he slapped Trelane across the face. Stunned, Trelane pushed the captain back and sat in his chair. As he leaned back, he slid his hand across the fine black leather. Yes, this will do fine. Thank you for listening to my uh, new story. I'm enjoying doing these, and I plan to do some more. Trelane, uh, The Squire of Gothos, was one of my favorite episodes. And uh, I got my little Squire of Gothos right here. And I hope you made it this far. I'm going to put him in my introduction. But uh, if you have any ideas for further episodes or a favorite character, let me know.